Hi, my name is uh, Mark Barner. I'm dentist in Victoriaville and I mostly treat periodontal disease. So we had an article in Octoreth Journal which uh, is Dentistry and Oral Maxillofacial Surgery lastly and I just want to uh, explain to you how it uh, how it uh, happened. So the title is Microscopy Analysis Revealed the Parasitism of Antamoeba Gingivalis in Periodontitis. Uh, so what we want to present here is has the parasite we find in periodontal disease, Antamoeba Gingivalis, present mostly pathogen behavior. So we should consider that this parasite is not normal in uh, the um, healthy biofilm, healthy gum. So uh, what I show in figure one, if you want to look at the figures, so you see commensal biofilm. So commensal biofilm on microscope, which is easy to take, just a sample with a little probe. You go into the gum uh, sulcus, you you take it from, from there. And when patient is healthy, you only have little bacteria, non motile bacteria, mostly cocci and filaments, dots and lines, and epithelial cells. So this is absolute health. When you have dots and lines, cocci and filament, no motile bacteria, no parasite, no nothing, only epithelial cell, this is absolute health. This is common cell biofilm. Now when you have periodontal disease after you had first gingivitis, gingivitis normally, uh, then you find those parasites. So those parasites, Antamoeba gingivalis in figure 2, you can see on the low power 100 magnification in about this uh, picture which is a 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter Okay, you can find like uh, something like 100 parasite, Antamoeba gingivalis, which may be 30 to 50 micron long. So about 100 of them are present. So this is a high present, this is a high correlation during periodontal active disease. And none are found in the healthy biofilm. So now we can uh, consider in figure 3 you can see the typical amoeba with the nucleus in the center, karyosome and chromatin. It's colorized in blue so it's easier to see and you see the pseudopod. Now we have demonstrated in uh, 2018 that it was Antamoeba gingivalis 100% uh, of the time. So we see the typical amoeba, amoeba here. In B you can see how it does uh, uh, reproduce by scission. So you have a little baby uh, amoeba coming from the mother on the left. And then you see how uh, in C figure 3C you see the little amoeba with the nucleus organizing with five dots within the nucleus which will be further will, will be the chromatin four chromatin dots around the nucleus and the central karyosome and you see on the right an amoeba uh, adult and when the amoeba is adult it can feed mostly they feed the amoeba on uh, uh, nucleus of white cell nucleus of neutrophil sometimes monocyte so you see here a big amoeba, uh, more than 50, 60 um, microns in diameter. You see the nucleus and you see how it could uh, have eaten about 15 uh, nucleus of white cell. Now in figure uh, 3E, you can see the amoeba moving with time. So here after uh, one or two minutes, you can see the amoeba evolving within the microbiota. So we can have displacement and you have an F, you have the image of the amoeba uh, making a channel within the microbiota, the bacteria microbiota. You can follow the amoeba while she's going somewhere. And then in G and H, you see a typical characteristic of the amoeba, which is uroid or uropod, which is characteristic of a pathogen parasite 
just like antamoeba gingivalis during uh, intestinal amebiasis or liver amebiasis. Now, this amoeba, when we look at the, we observe what is going on within periodontal sulcus of patient. Uh, you see in figure 4a, you see the amoeba ingesting uh, at the beginning the nucleus of the white cell and then it goes on B, C and D until they absorb, they phagocytize the complete nucleus of the white cell. So this we call exonucleophagia. Uh, which is a um, typical pathogen characteristic. Let's see, having an amoeba, not present in health, present in 100% of the disease, eating the nucleus of your immune cell makes it really, um, really a pathogen uh, uh, parasite. So you see on the lower, uh, e, F, G, and H, you see the amoeba uh, nourishing from one nucleus of a white cell. See how displacement and it, it's getting inside the parasite progressively, becoming its nourishment. And sometimes uh, you can have two uh, nucleus in the same time. So the amoeba is nourishing, is eating two white cells in the same time. And we've seen some time uh, four nucleus of white cell in the same time so it becomes really a very uh, highly pathogen parasite eating the four nucleus of the of the nucleus of the of the white cell at the same time now in figure 5 you can see how the amoeba is getting into the white blood cell and the pseudopod is attacking the nucleus of the white cell and then further ingesting the inside of the white cell getting the protein getting the nucleus within it and when it is completed you see on in figure 5b you see how those ghost cells those are white cells that have lost their granules activity they have lost their neutrophil their nucleus uh, to the parasite and it um, probably is the cause major cause of uh, bone destruction uh, from this uh, white cell disintegration. Now the amoeba can uh, organize in C and D. You can see it organize in some kind of nest and it can organize with the bacteria which we call inquilinism and this will further make uh, calculus under the gum, black calculus under the gum. But now you see the amoeba, we have about six, seven here amoeba uh, within the, the the microbiota with inquilinism with the bacteria. So they live together, but they organize within this bacterial state and they can uh, mature and they can, uh, can make a baby and reproduce. Uh, on the last image in figure five, you see how the amoeba, which is colorized in blue, and you see the red cell colorized in red. You see how the amoeba just put a little pseudopod, get touching the red cell, just puncturing it, puncturing it, and then you see the little phagocytic line where the amoeba gets the inside of the nuke of the white of the red cell, pardon me, the red cell, and get the iron and some food uh, from the red cell and when it is almost completed you see the pseudopod of the uh, amoeba which goes like a torsion so it makes an eight in the red cell and then it just cut the um, it just separate from the red cell which leave a red cell with almost uh, nothing within it it's some um, kind of pale uh, red cell and you see the so the bone where you see the little black phagocytic line completing the phagocytosis of the inside of the red cell. And you can see inside the parasite, you can see some dark little spot, black spot, which um, means they have, uh, the amoeba already had uh, phagocytized some more uh, red blood cell. 
So now, uh, what the model will propose clearly is um, periodontal disease is a parasitic disease, 100% uh, correlation, and we can state that the parasite has behavioral activity which makes it a pathogen, just as Antamoeba histolytica would be the same. So uh, there is no parasite in the health uh, patient. Uh, you may find one but just passing by. You can get the parasite from the water, from the neighbor, from the uh, infected water, and then it goes away if you're healthy because they, the parasite cannot um, uh, nourish uh, if there's no blood, if there's no inflammation, because it needs red cell and white cell to uh, to get food. Now, if you have the gingivitis, then you already have those neutrophil present and red cell because it's bleeding. So the amoeba can reproduce, reproduce, and then you have those white cell uh, during the periodontal disease, uh, relarging, rejecting all those granules or those uh, enzymes that will destroy the bone. So the more and more, the deeper and deeper is the pocket that of the patient, then the more and more you have those white cells, those parasites, this bleeding, and the amoeba reproducing. So if you want to cure the patient, of course, you have to remove those uh, parasites and remove the inflammatory cells. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, there's not much uh, limitation to this technique because any dentist, mostly periodontist, can use the microscope, can make sure you have common cell or otherwise you have this periodontal disease with a parasite present in 100%. So it is easy to perform, there's no pain for the patient, uh, you can do it as many times as you want to confirm or not the infection. Infection also with the parasite is exogen parasitic infection during periodontal disease. There's no parasite in health. There are some bacteria in health. You can have some vibrio, some sparkies, some um, bacilla, but not many. But <coughs> during periodontal disease, you get those external parasite, external parasite infection, and the microscope can give us the answer as you are or not infected with that. Now, uh, during time, uh, science has shown that parasites like Georgia were pathogen, um, Helicobacter pylori was a pathogen, uh, while before we didn't think it was. So it's the same thing here for the amoeba, Antamoeba gingivalis. It has all the characteristics of a pathogen. It is highly motile. It can phagocytize red cell and white cell, uh, destroy your immune cellular uh, activity within the sulcus, and, and it makes really, it can be a causal agent of periodontal disease. And we already have published how we can cure those patients removing uh, those parasites. So uh, we can use antimicrobial, antiparasitic drug to cure the disease. And all the evidence points out that Antamoeba gingivalis, the parasite, is an aggressive pathogen during periodontal disease. So get rid of the parasite. So thank you for your listening and good health to all. Thank you.